everyone. I just realized our lights are out up front here. That's what's throwing me, our spotlights. I can see people. That's what threw me off. Uh, <laughs> usually the lights are so bright you can't see anything. So, uh, But welcome to Ogemaw Hills Church. Uh, it is a joy to be gathered together in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hope you had a beautiful Christmas uh, with the uh, the reason for the season, Jesus Christ, seated right at the middle of it as we celebrate uh, his birth. And now we are celebrating, heading in, ah, we're heading into uh, a new year and uh, with great expectation, anticipation of God being on the throne. Amen? God is on the throne. Because God is on the throne, we can look at 2019 with hope. Right? With hope. If anyone else is on the throne, we have no hope. Right, if we would give control over 2019 to anyone else, can, even ourselves, then the next year holds no hope for newness, transformation, change, uh, eternity, um, e- eternal things, eternal principles and purposes being accomplished and fulfilled. If anyone is on the throne other than Christ in 2019, we have no hope, but Christ is on the throne. So we can trust in that. And, and our job then as we transition, we've got a, a one more day after this in 2018 as we transition into a new year with some expectation and some, some looking forward and some looking back. We look forward and we look back through the lens of the purposes in the kingdom of God, the purposes of Christ and the kingdom of God uh, with expectation that he'll do great things. And, and I hope by his grace we settle for no less. You know, sometimes we can get so worn out by things not changing that we lose our expectation and hope and trust in him that things can and will change. And we, get, we can get stripped of uh, the, the excitement of a child with their father, you know, which is God's call upon our lives, right? That we would, we would look forward to the day that's ahead holding hands with our father. And if we're holding hands with our heavenly father, then this day ahead is going to be filled with adventure, excitement, protection, provision. And that's what God um, expects for us. And so we come hungry for him. Uh, just to call your attention to the bulletin again, each, each week there's always upcoming activities that are shifting, things that are on the calendar. Uh, please make note of those things. Lots of exciting things coming up. And just want to turn it over to uh, Brad Older on behalf of Student Ministries to just share a couple things with us that are coming up for uh, Student Ministries. Good morning, church. Yeah, a couple of uh, exciting things coming up for youth ministry. Um, Monday, we do have our New Year's Eve ball drop. Um, we have opened that um, kind of to an all-ages category uh, for children. Uh, if you are interested in coming to that, it is from 8 p.m. Uh, to 1 a.m. in the morning. Um, parents, if your kids are planning on coming, um, please see me in between services or after second service today uh, just to go over some things with you about that. Um, we do have um, a- another event coming Friday, January 18th, Winter Jam. Um, the students get to go uh, see a couple bands, uh, listen to a couple speakers over in Grand Rapids. Um, so that's always a fun trip. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but, uh, again, that will be a long day. Students will be leaving right from the high school at 2.30 and not be coming back until 1 a.m. So, um, again, if you're interested in that, please see me or contact me. Um, or Holly at the church office. So, uh, thank you, guys. All right, thank you, Brad. These events ending at 1 a.m., when he says pick up your kids at 1, I'm guessing he means that. I don't know. You, it sounds like a sleepover to me. It could be an all-nighter. <laughs> don't show up, and he's got an all-nighter. I don't know. No, get your kids. Um, sorry, Brad. <laughs> uh, and also just wanted to uh, take a moment and... Uh, just point to where we're heading next on Wednesday nights for our adult ministry. Uh, Wednesday night is our all-church family night ministry from nursery through the oldest. Uh, we've got something going for every age group on Wednesday nights. Uh, this coming Wednesday, the second, we still don't have Wednesday night ministry because uh, school is still on Christmas break at that point, and we keep uh, in line with the school calendar as far as when we do Wednesdays and when we don't. So it'll be a week from this Wednesday that we'll relaunch back into CLC and uh, 56 Club Youth Ministries, all that kind of thing. And so we'll be launching our new Wednesday night class, and we are going to do a Wednesday night class called The Grave Robber, talking about the miracles of Jesus Christ ending with uh, Jesus being the grave robber, calling Lazarus from the grave. So we have a quick promo clip, 
from uh, Matt Batterson. Let's take a moment and watch that. Jesus was more than a master carpenter. He was also God incognito. 34 distinct miracles are recorded in the Gospels, but John's Gospel spotlights seven miracles. It's those miracles that we're going to explore during this study. Each of the seven miracles that we study reveals a unique dimension of God's power and glory. For three decades, he kept his miraculous powers secret. Well, that changed the day water blushed in the face of its creator. Turning water into wine, it was Jesus revealing his authority over every atom in the universe. The second miracle, Jesus relieves a dangerously high fever from 20 miles away. It shows off his macroscopic mastery of time and space. The invalid was already past his prime. In fact, you could say he was living on borrowed time. And I wonder if that's why Jesus singled him out. Andrew figures that five loaves and two fish will feed about seven people. It doesn't add up. If you put what you have into God's hands, he can make a lot out of a little. Most miracles don't happen within sight of the shoreline. You have to venture into uncharted waters. If you follow Jesus long enough and far enough, you'll eventually walk on water. So Jesus did more than just heal his blind eyes. He restored his dignity by rebuking helplessness. When we posture ourselves in humility and give honor to God, it positions us for the miraculous. There is no abracadabra. Jesus is not just the winemaker or the water walker. Jesus is the grave robber, and he saves his boldest claim for last. The grave robber steals back what the enemy has stolen. He will make the impossible possible. So we're going to spend seven weeks uh, looking through this study and just inviting God to be supernatural in our lives as we look to him and trust him and seek him. We don't seek miracles. We don't seek the supernatural. We seek him. And as we rightly seek him, God expresses himself in God ways, in Jesus ways. And so if you're interested in being a part of that study, uh, we want to make sure we have the little participants guides, the study guides ready for everybody. And so please take a moment before you leave today and hit the sign up station just into the gym on your left hand side. There's a place to sign up for the grave robber class that begins a week from Wednesday, 6 till 7.15 p.m. Runs right in line with all our uh, children's and student ministries on Wednesday nights. And we will look to God together uh, to do miracles in our lives and express himself in ways that glorify his holy name. Will you stand with me this morning? We're going to pray as we prepare our hearts to worship the Lord, use music as a gift from God, as an avenue to express our love for him, our adoration of him, who he means to us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the gift of yourself. Lord, that you, you've invited us into your presence today, and it has not come cheaply. Lord, as we're going to celebrate as we come to your table a little later in the service, Lord, you spared no expense. You paid unimaginable uh, costs to make what we're doing today available. And so, Lord, we're hungry for your presence. We're desperate for you, Lord. We ask you to come and make yourself known. And, Lord, nothing would make today better than if we please your heart and worship. We rightly offer ourselves to you and honor you, Lord. So we come to you not based on ourselves or based on our, our abilities or anything else, Lord. We come to you with open hands, just offering ourselves to you freely and wanting to receive from you because we need you. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great his our God, sing with me how great is our Beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one. Father, Spirit, and Son. The Lion and the Lamb. The Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our just ask you to remind us that we don't do due diligence to that word great we use that word on a daily basis but when we say you're great your greatness is you spoke and the universe happened that's great you're great you beat death that's great and today we're all here because you're great so thank you so much for that lord give life you are love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken and great are you Lord it's your In our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore. Every heart that is broken and great are you, Lord. 
It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. We read in Ephesians 2, 8, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and it is not of yourself, it is the gift of God. What a wonderful gift that is, the gift of amazing grace that he has given us. Lord, we're just so thankful for your grace that you've shed upon us, Lord, the mercy that you've showed us. Lord, you are a great father. My 
We're so thankful that we are yours and you are ours, Lord, that we know you now and forever. Lord, we thank you for your amazing grace. We thank you for your love. Continue to move among us, Lord, as your people. Use us to your glory. Lead us and guide us into all truth. Make your name great through us as your children. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. We're humbled in your presence. God, as we give this morning the offering, Lord, we give as worship. We give out an overflow of the abundance of gratitude that you've stirred within us through your generosity into our lives. Lord, not just materially, but in every way. So, Lord, as we give this morning... We give because you're worthy of our all. We give because everything is yours. We give, Lord, so you can use this offering, multiply it, and bring your kingdom into more and more lives. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of partnering with you in what you're doing here and around the world. We praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Ushers, would you come at this time?